Hello and welcome to Professor Pincushion. In this tutorial, I have a fun project for you. We're gonna be making a baby onesie from scratch. You can see here at the bottom we have snaps so it's easy to put on your baby. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's go over some of our supplies. So first we have fabric. This is just a baby knit that I'm using. Make sure that you choose knit because it needs to be stretchy. And out of a yard of 60 inch width fabric, I can get two onesies out of it. So I just get a yard. We have our pattern pieces. You can download this off our site. Some snap fasteners. The size of these are 3 8 of an inch. If you get something a little bit smaller, it'll work just fine. I have a hammer to help us put the snaps in. Straight pins, of course, always need those. Some all-purpose thread, my fabric marker, and scissors. And the only thing not shown here that I'm going to use is my sewing machine and iron. This is what we're gonna to need to cut out of each one of our patterns. So I have the onesie front piece and onesie back piece. Out of both of these pieces, I'm going to cut one out of my knit fabric. Out of my sleeve, I'm going to cut two. These grain line arrows should be going in the same direction and I always have them going parallel to the salvage of the fabric. Also, you wanna make sure if you have a directional fabric like mine, you make sure you place it so it's going in the right direction. We don't wanna end up with it going upside down. After you get all these cut, the very last thing you need is a strip of fabric, and this is one and five eighths in width, and the length is just my full length of the 60 inches. Now, if you didn't get 60 inches, it can be in multiple pieces, like two pieces, which is fine. We're just gonna use this strip to create our bias for the neckline and the bottom portion of the onesie. After all my pieces are cut out and marked, the first thing I'm gonna do is some stay stitching around the neckline and bottom portion of the front and back pieces. Now I'm not sewing any of my pieces together. I'm just sewing them individually, one single layer, just 3 eighths of an inch away from the raw edge, both sides, again, both pieces, and I'm just doing a regular length stitch. A stay stitch is going to keep our neckline flat and keep its shape so it doesn't get all distorted as we're working with it. So I'm just gonna go ahead, it's always a good idea to do this for your necklines, but I'm also gonna do it for my other curvy areas like the bottom portion as well. Again, this is at the 3 8 seam allowance and I'm just doing a regular length stitch and don't forget to back stitch. Next, I'm going to be applying binding to these four areas the neckline of front and back, and these bottom areas here of the front and back. So we're gonna start off showing you the neckline, but the process is gonna be the same for all four, so we'll just get a little closer. I'm going to take the strip of fabric that I cut from my binding, and I'm going to line it up with the raw edge that I want the binding to be, in this case, the neckline. So I'm gonna place it right side to right side. One side of the raw edge should line up with the raw edge of the garment. Now I know it's curvy, but I just take a small section at a time, forcing the binding to kind of conform with the neckline curve or whatever curve I'm working with. So you'll probably use a pen about every inch or so. Then I'm gonna take it to my sewing machine so I can sew a half inch seam allowance. For doing my seam, I'm just doing a regular straight stitch. Don't forget to backstitch. Also, you wanna make sure that you're constantly checking to make sure that you don't have any wrinkles or puckers going on underneath. So just take your time and make sure it's all nice and neat. I'm going to trim the seam allowance of the binding pieces only. So just this piece right here. So I'm leaving about a quarter of an inch left and what you'll end up with is something like this. So my main garment, I'm leaving the seam allowance, but for the binding seam allowance, I'm just trimming it. I'm going to take the other raw edge of the binding and I'm gonna fold it over to the back side. So all this seam allowance is gonna be enclosed and I'll show you what's gonna happen on the back. Let me just pin this real fast. All right, so if we looked over to the wrong side, let's flip this over. What's gonna end up happening is this raw edge should just cover your bottom stitching here from when we created the seam allowance. So if it's easier, you can flip it over and look at the wrong side when you're doing it. 
So I'm going to do this for all of the binding sides. I'm going to sew my binding into place looking at the right side of the garment. Now I'm going to be sewing on the side of the binding, but I want to get as close to the seam line as I can. So I'm basically outlining my seam line, but sewing on the binding side because I want to make sure that I catch my raw edge on the wrong side. Now the stitch I'm going to be using is going to be this stitch, number seven, which is basically a zigzag stitch with straight stitches on both sides. If you don't have a stitch that's similar to this, you can go ahead and just do a regular zigzag stitch. The reason I'm doing either one of these two stitches is because I want to maintain some of the stretchiness in the neckline area and these stitches help with that. Don't forget to do your back stitches and you're going to do this for all of your binding areas. Take your front, place it right side up, then bring in your back on top of it so the necklines are together. This is also right side up. Now we're going to match the edges here on the side of the neckline. So from your pattern piece, you should have a square mark on both sides of the front and the same thing on the back as well. And that's what we're going to match up next. So I'm just going to take this side first. So the end of the side is going to match up with the square mark. I'm making sure that the raw edges match. And then the end back here of the front matches up with the square on the back. So the front is going to be underneath your back piece. So once that's all lined up, go ahead and pin it into place. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. So again, the front is behind the back. This end is going to match up the square block over here. So this mark was on our pattern piece. If you didn't transfer it, go ahead and do that now. And then I have one down here and it's going to mat match the end of this one. And then I'm going to make sure the raw edges match up. We're going to take it to our sewing machine and you're going to do a basting stitch here and here to hold these two pieces together. Your basting stitch is going to be the largest stitch that your machine can do, so the longest length stitch. And you don't have to worry about any back stitching, it's just a temporary stitch. The seam allowance here doesn't really matter, I'm just doing 3 8 of an inch. Let's go ahead and take care of the sleeve pieces. So we have two of these sleeves and you're going to do the same thing for each one. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hem the sleeve up. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this over to the wrong side and we're going to fold this up a half inch. So this part that angles out, once it's folded up, it should be even. So you're going to have a nice line going down the bottom of it. So I'm going to go ahead, pin this and take it to the machine. And then I'm going to do that same zigzag stitch or you can do a regular zigzag stitch right along the top here. And let me show you an example of the one I've already done. So here's the one that I just finished. You can see that stitch right along the top and here it is on the right side. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for both sleeves. You're going to take the hem sleeve and you're going to attach it to the armhole section on each side. You'll notice that the front has a single notch, the back has a double notch and it's the same thing with the sleeve. Single notch, double notch. So if this was reversed, it just means that it goes on the other armhole. So I'm going to take the sleeve flip it over so it's right side to right side. We have this circle right here. I also have another circle right here that this is going to match. So the single notch is going to match with the single notch. The end here should meet with the side seam. I'll go ahead and start pinning this. So I first thing I do is I match up all my main points, the ends, the notches, the middle, and then I just ease in between. Once you have everything pinned, both sleeves, you're going to take it to your machine and do a quarter inch seam allowance. The last thing we're going to sew are the side seams. So I've already pinned this area here. I just need to pin this. You're going to start with the small underarm seam here, part of the sleeve. Make sure that your seam allowances from the sleeve go towards the sleeve and then you're going to pin all along here, both the front and back together. So make sure that your double notch matches and the ends match as well. Then you're going to sew a quarter inch seam allowance. 
The last thing we need to do is put on our snaps and then we're done with our onesie. So you'll notice at the bottom of my patterns, the front and back, I have three X's and this is the position of the snaps. So you have it for the front and the back. Now you normally mark these after I put on the binding, because if you put it on before the binding, then the binding is just gonna cover them and you're gonna have to redo them anyways. When you get your snaps, you have two sides. You have the socket, which is the flat side, and then you have this one, which is the stud. We're actually going to start with the socket portion and that's gonna go on the back. So we're gonna get a little bit closer to show you how to put that in. All your snap pieces are gonna be paired with a prong, which looks like this. So it has a flat side and then you have these prongs sticking up. Now I'm looking at the back and it's the wrong side facing up. So the right side is under here. So I'm gonna take my prong piece just as, as it is. So flat side on the table, prong sticking up. And I'm gonna position it underneath where my X is. And if you can, just start pushing the fabric on it because you really want your prongs to start coming up through the fabric if you can. The next part is going to be the socket. Now, if you look at the socket, you'll see one side, this top side is raised up and this other back side is completely flat. The raised up side is going down towards the fabric. So it's going towards the prong and it's gonna be positioned in the same thing. And I'm gonna try to push it down. You really want your prongs to start coming through the fabric so then it's easier to hold the socket piece in place so it doesn't move around. Once it's in position, you're gonna be very careful not to bang your fingers or anything like that. You bring in a hammer and you give it a couple of good smashes because you really want the prongs to be pushed into the bottom of the socket. And that's how the snap goes on. Now, if you can invest getting one of these little snap fastener tools, make it really easy to actually put it on, especially if when the fabric's a little thick like this one is. So I'm gonna open up the bottom portion of the fastener and you'll see there's a little groove, little 15. That is going to fit the prong. And again, prong side up. I'm gonna put it over or under my X. Then I'm gonna bring this middle portion and just push that down. So the fabric's kind of coming through it. Then I'm going to put this other part right on top of that and put the lid down. So now it's all in place and now my fingers are out of the way. It's not going to shift and I can use my hammer to just hit that end piece and then my snap will be on. Now we're going to do the snaps for the front and if you want to double check, you can always fold over your bottom snaps to make sure that it's going to line up with your excess. So again, we're starting off with our prawn piece, and this time we're looking at the right side of the front. So everything's pretty much still the same as it was in our last part where we put these snaps on. The prawn part, again, is gonna go underneath. We get positioned here underneath my X. Prawn side going up. Then I have the stud and it has a flat side and then it has this little knobby thing coming up and that's gonna get positioned right over the prong. And again, you wanna kind of push down the fabric on the prong to get the prong starting to come through the fabric. Now the problem is if I just hammer directly onto the stud, the hammer can damage the actual stud part and actually make it flatter and then it's not gonna work with the snap. So what is a recommendation is to get an old spool and it has a hole in the bottom of it and you're gonna place that hole right over the stud part. So then you're hammering on top of the spool. Now you gotta be careful because it might actually damage your spool, but it's a way to protect that center part. Or I can use my little snap attacher, same way as I did before. So I do the stud, I put the fabric, I put the middle part down, and then I place my stud on top of that. And actually in this top part, there's actually a hole for the stud part. So then they're already protecting it and then I can go ahead and hammer that down. Okay, so our snaps are in. You just have to remove any basting stitches and fabric markers that you have and then go find a baby to wear your onesie. 
New tutorials are released weekly, so please subscribe to be notified of the next release. Make sure to check out our other videos and visit ProfessorPincushion.com to view our complete library with well over 200 sewing video tutorials, including our exclusive premium content. Our premium membership is only $5 a month for unlimited access and only available at ProfessorPincushion.com. Also, don't forget to download our mobile app for videos on the go. Thanks for watching.